Hey everybody, this is Walter Resendez with Access Electric, and today I want to talk to you about how to wire up a pump panel. This is a 480 volt, three phase pump panel. It's the kind of pump panel you'll typically see on a dairy or uh, usually in an agricultural environment, uh, wherever there could be a well, uh, it could be a sump pump, uh, anything like that. So I'm going to go over the schematic and show you exactly how it works. So let's get right into it. So here on the screen, I have a pump panel control drawing. Now, this looks a little bit different than the three wire start stop that I was showing you last week. Uh, this is not a three wire start stop, although it's very, very similar. Uh, let's go through the components and I'll show you what to look at here is our main breaker. So let's turn that off. We have a three phase 480 volt service or feeder. We have a three phase 480 volt feeder to this pump panel. The pump panel has a main breaker. And when we turn that on, it's going to feed 480 volt three phase to the motor contactor. And it's going to use two of these phases to power up two small fuses which power up a control transformer. This transformer will take our power from 480 volt down to 120 volts. And we're gonna use the 120 volts to power up all our controls. That's what's going to control the starter coming on and off. Let me turn the power on to the 40 volt breaker and you'll get an idea of just what gets heated up. All right, so I've turned the power on to the breaker again Power has fed the motor contactor. These are the three contacts of our motor starter, the three contacts. And then we fed our fuses. We're feeding 480 volt to the top side. This is called the primary side of our transformer. We're feeding 480 volt to the primary side of the transformer. On the secondary side, we are getting 120 volts. This is our neutral coming from our transformer and it is bonded to ground and it's bonded to ground because it's a separately derived system. And so we bond that to ground. And here's our hot 120 volt coming off our transformer, which if you'll remember from our three wire start stop video, uh, this power circuit fed a maintained, normally closed stop button. In this video, or in, in the case of a pump panel, we are feeding a hand off auto switch. And here you'll see the switch is in auto mode. Here I'll, I'll switch it to off. When it's in off, both this switch and this switch are open. When it's in hand, only the top switch closes, the bottom switch stays open. Again, in off, both will stay open. And then in auto, the top switch will stay open the bottom switch will close. So that is the operation of a hand off auto switch. All right, so here in hand, hand sends power directly to our start, start button, just like in the three, wi the three wire start stop. Hand sends power directly to our start button. When we hit start, the coil will energize the motor auxiliary contact will close and it will keep itself on. Okay, let's try that out. Hit start. The coil energized, the auxiliary closed, bypassing the start button and it kept, it kept itself on. Okay, it will stay on until we turn the switch off. Or until we lose a new, if we lost our overload, it would also shut off. Let me start that again. And in this case, I'll just turn the switch off. Here, I turn the switch off. In the case of the auto mode, when we put this into auto mode, we will not have power to our start button. We will have power through a, a terminal block. We'll have power to a field device. Now this device here, it's a float switch. This is a field device, so it, it may be it could be anything. It could be a float switch. It could be a, a level transmitter. Uh, it could be um, 
any kind of switch that would you would want. It could be a timer. So say every night at eight o'clock, this comes on for an hour. It could be a timer that closes for an hour and then opens. It could be anything. In this particular case, I have it as a float switch. When the float rises, it turns the motor on. So this would be a case of a pump down situation where maybe um, a lift station for uh, sewage uh, where when the tank gets full, you want the pump to come on. So here when the float rises, the pump would come on. Now the pump would stay running until the float opens. And this is a typical pump panel. And that's how it works. So you have hand, off, and auto. If it's off, let me turn that off, nothing will work. I can come hit start. I can, the float can rise, the float can fall. Nothing will happen because nothing is getting by our handoff auto switch. Again, in hand mode, the float can rise and fall. It won't operate anything because there's no power going to the float switch when it's in hand mode. But if I switch it to auto mode, the start button can come on and off. Nothing will happen because there's no power feeding the start button. Only the float will turn the system on and will turn the system off. If this were a timer, only the timer would turn the system on and would turn the system off. There's a pump panel, folks. So if you like this video, click the like button. If you want to subscribe to my channel, hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified of new videos coming out, just hit that bell icon and you'll get notified. And that's it for today. So we'll see you in the next video.